Thanks for not stealing my thunder. <laughs> you would have told the whole story I'm going to tell. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, as you know, I'm Nathan Bach, and this is a pause for parody. Um, my first time at Building on the Rock uh, was at a staff meeting, and uh, it's where I met some of the leaders of the church. And as soon as I met Joe Ceratelli, um, I knew that there was something different about this man. Sure, his hair was kind of different. It was all long and sloppy-like. <laughs> but that was just a part of it. What I saw in Joe was that he had this excitement for life, this spark, this faith that good things were going to happen. And a week later at the summer youth camp, I saw the love and passion that Joe had for God and how he led the youth to love and follow Jesus. And I said to myself, I need to be like Joe. As we worked together in youth group with Kid Zone and outreach events, I saw how Joe passionately communicated God's love to people. And then I said to myself again, I need to have that kind of freedom. Joey wasn't a phony. He was a real deal. He communicated God's word in such a way that people naturally followed his lead. Joe, Joe challenged me to be myself and to just let loose. Now, going, going back to January 2008, on the coldest day of the year, Pastor Bob and I, we were camping out in the woods out there in Collier Mills, <laughs> taking a retreat with God. But unfortunately, it was so cold that even God left us <laughs> to get warm. I mean, I remember sleeping right next to the campfire to keep from turning into ice. It was brutal. I, I almost fell into the fire pit to try and stay, stay warm. Anyhow, besides all that, earlier in the week, um, Joe had came to Pastor Bob and, and he had talked to him about some struggles that were going on in his life. He really wanted to be changed by God and never the same. And so Pastor Bob gave him a mission to do Bible devotions with him every weekday morning. Although Joe couldn't camp out with us that, that week because he had to work, he brought out his Lincoln car out into Collier's Mills, through the sandy roads, into the woods, to meet us at 7 a.m. in the freezing cold. And out of that, I was pulled into regular morning devos with, with both Pastor Bob and Joe. And then months later, God brought the Mennonel's discipleship house and the ministry into my life because of Joe's desperate heart to be changed by God. When the Mennonel's took off, Joe and I were, were two of the original leaders. And his example as a leader impacted me. He showed me how to be myself and to be honest and real. See, Joe, he practiced confessing his sin and getting help from his brothers, even when it was uncomfortable for him. And even though I didn't like being vulnerable like that, I followed Joe as he followed Christ. He impacted me not only in his examples, but he believed in me that I was called to be a leader and a pastor. He believed in me that I have what it takes. Joey, man, thank you so much, bro. I love you, bro. And I just thank you for investing into me with your, with your friendship, your leadership, your encouragement, your time. Man, because of you, I'm a better man of God. I thank God for you, man. And if, if you hadn't been desperate for God like that, you know, there might not be a men and Nils ministry. That ministry in your life, Joe, God has used to change my life. Now, though you're graduating today, man, you're forever going to be a part of this ministry. I mean, you blazed the trail. You set the example. You left the legacy for, for all of us men of God who are in the ministry and for the church to follow. And Joey, I look forward to what God is going to do in you and through you in this next year to rock the world. Congratulations, Joe. The kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and forceful men lay hold of it. And when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, Joe, you're, you're a forceful man. I remember a year ago you stood in front of this church, and you shared a pause for purity of your own. Without mentioning this verse, its challenge in truth is exactly what you spoke about. You shared with us an excerpt from John Bunyan's book, Pilgrim's Progress. 
the story of a character named Christian and his journey through life and eventually entering into the celestial city. I want to recount that tale that you told on that day this morning. It says, the interpreter took Christian and led him up toward the door of the palace. And behold, at the door stood a great company of men as desirous to go in, but dared not. There also sat a man a little distance from the door at a table side with a book and his inkhorn before him to take the names of them that should enter therein. He saw also that in the doorway stood many men in armor to keep it, being resolved to do the men that would enter what hurt and mischief they could. Now was Christian somewhat in amaze. At last, when every man fell back for fear of the armed men, Christian saw a man of a very stout countenance come up to the man that sat there to write, saying, Set my name down, sir. That which when he had done, he saw the man draw his sword, put a helmet upon his head, and rush toward the door upon the armed men, who laid upon him with deadly force. But the man, not at all discouraged, fell to cutting and hacking most fiercely. So after he had received and given many wounds to those that attempted to keep him out, he cut his way through them all and pressed forward into the palace. A year ago, Joe, you told Pastor Bob to put your name in the book. And I believe that in your heart on that day, you drew up your sword and you put on your helmet and you rushed against everything and anything that would get in the way of God's will for your life. You wanted victory and you've been at war ever since. It's been an honor to lead you to be led by you, and to battle alongside you. You are a man of a very stout countenance, Joe Saratelli. And on behalf of all of these warriors, I'd like to present you with this. And a charge, and a charge to continue cutting and hacking most fiercely whatever it is that would dare to rise up against that desire in your heart to lay hold of that palace door. That sword for you uh, because of what it, what and you reminded us of that sword and uh, there's a scene in the movie gladiator where uh, Proximo um, the head over all the other gladiators he's talking to Maximus and saying how he was in the arena how he once was a gladiator and he fought long enough and he fought hard enough until he won his freedom and I think about your staying in men and nails and I think about when you came in and and you you suffered from the from fear you were held captive and over this last year, man, I fought beside you along, and we were in the arena, all of us men, and we watched you fight bloody battles, battles that no gladiators ever had to fight, and you won your freedom, brother. And that is our gift to you to show you, bro, that you got your freedom. And Joe. <laughs> and one other thing, Joe. It's not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never known victory nor defeat. Congratulations, Joe. Man of God.